Hey, grace and peace. Uh, Ephesians chapter number five, we saw he calls us to walk in this world as beloved children of God, to be those who follow the pattern that Christ followed. So that our lives are a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So this is the beginning point. This is the foundation of it. And in verse three, he says, now, what, what, what's the opposite of a walk of love? Um, the opposite of a walk of love would be a walk that is gratifying to the lustful desires of the flesh, a self-centered and self-driven life. And he says, this doesn't suit you anymore. So in verse three, he says, but sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as a prop as is proper among saints. He says, who are you? Saints. People who have been sanctified, are being sanctified, who've been set apart to God. Now, we were all guilty of one of these or others in one form or another. That's what we were as sinners. So don't be surprised when sinners sin. But he's saying, listen, that's what you used to be. And I gave you a new heart and a new nature and a whole new way of living. So don't let any of these things be named among you. They don't fit you. This is his, him speaking to the church. He goes, there's no place for this in the church or the saints who are members of that church. He says, let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking which are out of place, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. So here's a little nuance that I think we can be very uh, unaware of how we transgress in this area. We make excuses for it. Um, he says, no, no more filthiness or foolish talk or crude joking. Crude joking. He's saying, listen, everything you say, every action that you take needs to fit in line with who you are as a beloved child of God. Don't make excuses for it. Don't say, oh, this is normal in my line of work and everybody does it. Well, you're not everybody. Remember the difference is that you are a beloved child of God. And that changes everything so that our speech and our actions align with who we are as the children of God. Then in verse five, he says, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now that seems very threatening and scary. And he's saying like, he said, don't kid yourself. If you don't have the spirit of God, you're none of his. <laughs> so he's saying, you know, um, the inheritance is to receive all that we have in Christ. He says this, it, it, it's it, sexual immorality, impurity, and covetousness. Now you think, well, What's covetousness? He said it's idolatry, but coveting is what most of us Americans are trapped in, wanting more, wanting what others have, thinking we need material possessions. He goes, that's idolatry. That's what you serve. That's what you bow down to. He goes, you can't be in the kingdom of God and in pursuit of friendship with the world. And we need to confront it in our lives. We need to see it and let it be rooted out by the Holy Spirit because it is a part of our culture. Um, just as sexual immorality was common in Corinth and Ephesus and these different places, he's saying, you're distinct now. You're not part of that group. And so idolatry, uh, we think of as molden images, but he says, anything that you bow down to serve, that could be a house payment, it could be a car, it could be, you know, a retirement fund. I don't know. What keeps you 
from pursuing the king and the kingdom? What are you serving that has become a substitute for serving Christ? That's your idol. That's your idol. And he says, it doesn't suit you anymore. And if you are truly a beloved child of God, he says, listen, let it be rooted out. It doesn't fit you. And he tells us very clearly here, he says, don't let anyone deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. You see, put out of your mind this idea that someone can explain away that these things would be okay. Um, it's pretty evident in our culture, even in the Christian culture, that we see where even pastors are consumed with material possessions. He goes, that's deception. And he says, don't look at that and let anyone like that deceive you. Because that's what it is. He goes, that's the very reason the wrath of God is poured out on the sons of disobedience. Are you a beloved child or a son of disobedience? Well, how do we know? Because we've entrusted ourselves to him and we're walking in love. And walking in love precludes being self-centered and self-driven, serving others. We are those who have been engaged to Christ. We, have a, we are bond servants of Christ. We are slaves of righteousness. This is who we are. It's not what we're trying to become. It's who we are. And so we put off all those things that are contrary to that new nature in him. If it doesn't fit a son of the living God, it doesn't fit us as saints. I know it seems a little harsh, but we need to hear these things and understand them and meditate them. Let the Holy Spirit reveal anything in our attitudes or actions that doesn't fit with who we are. Don't be deceived. Don't make excuses. Let your mouth be an instrument that uplifts, encourages, and fits your Savior. I love you. I hope you have a great day.